Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Hafiz Amjad Hussain from Medical Unit 4, working as Assistant Professor. Today's two lectures are to be given. One is mitral stenosis and another other is mitral regurgitation. So both are very important, in particularly as a short, uh, short cases. The first one starting with mitral stenosis. As the name indicates, mitral stenosis means stenosis or fibrosis of the mitral valve opening. So why it's called mitral? Because it resembles mitral means it's the cap of bishop. So because it resembles the cap of bishop, its name is these valves are named as mitral valves. So the most common cause of mitral valve stenosis is rheumatic. Almost all patients who present with mitral stenosis alone or in combination with others, they are as a result of rheumatic heart disease. So we are going to discuss etiology, symptoms, physical examinations, severity signs, history, and its management. So, as I said earlier, primarily it is as a result of rheumatic fever. 99% of the mitral valve disease, they are due to rheumatic damage, leading to scarring and fusion of valve apparatus and narrowing up if its opening. It's a progressive lifelong disease, usually slow early and then leading to its acceleration and being symptomatic after a few years. So its normal valve area is 4 to 6 centimeters. If it's between 1.5 to 2.5, it's mild, sometimes with symptoms and in majority of the cases, they are asymptomatic. Then moderate mitral stenosis between 1 to 1.5 centimeter, usually they produce symptoms on exertion especially. And severe mitral stenosis where are, which are obviously symptomatic having mitral valve area less than 1 centimeter square. So here is point to learn something. This is mitral valve and its apparatus. This is mitral valve opening. This is left atrium. This is left ventricle. This is a very important picture. So this is normal opening. If this is stenosed, what will happen? That blood which comes from left atrium to left ventricle will be blocked here. If it's mild, there will be no blockage or some blockage and it will produce no symptoms. If it is moderate to severe, it will definitely produce symptoms because of blockage of blood here. Normally, oxygenated blood comes from lungs through pulmonary veins into left atrium. So from left atrium, blood some blood passively goes into left ventricle followed by contraction of left atrium and rest of the blood into left ventricle and then left ventricle push this into systemic circulation so consider the symptoms if it is blocked here what will happen the pressure in the left atrium will be increased and left atrium will be hypertrophic and then dilated. Then what will happen? This will be a packed pressure to the through pulmonary veins and then into lungs. So leading to pulmonary congestion. If it's persistently narrowed and not relieved, then what will happen? The blood which is in pulmonary vasculature then will be pushed back into 
right atrium and left uh, right ventricle so right atrium and right ventricle will be hypertrophied and dilated and there will be increased pressure starting from left atrium then to into pulmonary vasculature then right atrium and then right ventricle everywhere there will be increased pressure leading to the symptoms in the lungs pulmonary congestion and having pleural effusion and cough and shortness of breath and if pressure is so much raised pulmonary veins and osmosis will be ruptured leading to hemoptysis then right atrium so as you know the signs and symptoms of right heart failure will be there raised jvp abdominal distension due to ascites right hypocondrium pain due to tender enlarged liver bilateral pedal edema and sacral edema so the next will be what will happen that if there is stenosed hair from the left atrium less blood is coming to the left ventricle and there will be decreased cardiac output now because of decreased cardiac output there will be fatigue and pains in the bodies because of less oxygenated blood supplying to the peripheries and circulation so what are the symptoms and signs of left ventricle failure shortness of breath on exertion orthopnea paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea fatigue and weakness and cyanosis crackles displaced apex beats and s3 what are signs and symptoms of right failure pedal edema ascites raised jvp tender liver and left peristaltic heat due to right ventricular hypertrophy so what was happening there is there is decreased left ventricular filling progressive fibrosis calcification of valve leaflets and fusion of valve cusps decreased left ventricular filling increased left atrial pressure as i already said increased pulmonary venous congestion and breathlessness pulmonary hypertension right ventricular hypertrophy to signs and symptoms of right heart failure pulmonary hypertension pulmonary congestion is left atrial enlargement and atrial fibrillation because of left atrial enlargement there may be a chances of atrial fibrillation and if there is atrial fibrillation there are chances of left atrial thrombosis left if there is left atrial thrombus goes to left ventricle then it may go to systemic fibrillation leading to stroke and other complications right heart failure hepatic congestion raised jvp tricuspid regurgitation and right atrium enlargement so what are clinical features the same as i said on that the previous picture symptoms breathlessness due to pulmonary congestion fatigue due to low cardiac output edema ascites due to right heart failure palpitations due to atrial fibrillation and increased stroke volume hemoptysis rupture of an osmosis of small cough due to pulmonary congestion chest pain thromboembolic complications and these are two different things one is ortner syndromes large left atrium may impinge on left recurrent laryngeal nerve leading to hoarseness of voice and dysphagia with the same phenomena of uh, impinging on the esophagus which lead to dysphagia now the conditions which will increase heart rate are output will worsen the conditions because there will be decreased time increase heart rate decrease diastolic filling and there will be decrease cardiac output leading to worsening physical signs are depending upon either the patient having right heart failure or not 
number one because in initial stages there will be no right heart failure or right atrium increased right atrial pressure so it depends upon severity of the mitral stenosis what are these mitral fasces a diastolic thrill at the apex with the patient in the left atrial position on an auscultation loud first of all on palpation there will be tapping apex why there is tapping apex it's a loud first heart sound and a palpable first heart sound is called tapping apex because of increased pressure gradient among uh, along the left ventricle and left atrium there is increased pressure in the left atrium there will be increased pressure at the cystic in the left ventricle so this the closure of the uh, mitral valves will be against the increased pressure gradients leading to loud first heart sound and palpable first heart sound palpable first heart sound is called tapping apex so on auscultation there will be loud palpable loud uh, first heart sound and mid diastolic rough rumbling murmur there will be an opening snap after the second heart sounds opening snap is due to opening of mitral valve again the opening against the high pressure there will be bilateral capillation due to pulmonary edema and effusions due to raise pulmonary pressures then the signs and symptoms of right heart failure and with pulmonary hypertension this is what are its complications if there is atrial fibrillation the complications there is thrombi leading to embolizations there will be heart failure signs and symptoms of heart failure pulmonary infarcts hemoptysis if there is increased pressure in the pulmonary veins and very rarely what are features on what are the diagnostic uh, tools these are in almost all cardiac diseases ecg x-ray chest echocardiography and cardiac catheterization so what ecg will show left atrial enlargement there will be p mitral p mitral means more than three small square in the horizontal p more than in more than three small scales right ventricular hypertrophy there will be r wave predominant r wave in v1 so this is p mitral chest x ray will show in large left atrium straightening of the left border signs of pulmonary venous congestion curly b of left ventricular failure and double density of the right atrial border so this is straightening of the left heart border this is increased left atrial appendage echocardiography will show definitely all the features it will be diagnostic because it will uh, will show the um, area of the uh, opening severity and uh, cusps thick and immobile cusps reduced valve area reduced rate of diastolic filling in the left ventricle enlarged left atrium pulmonary hypertension and doppler will show pressure gradient across and management depends upon either the patient having having uh, symptoms or not if the patient have symptoms then there will be management if there is no symptoms there is no need of the management there are few options medical management will be anticoagulation to reduce thromboembolic phenomena rate control of ventricle if there is atrial fibrillation or increased heart rate diuretic therapy if there is pulmonic signs of pulmonary congestion so mitral blue velvotomy for the patients who are symptomatic and isolated mitral stenosis who are young 
and who are having mobile non calcified valve because if the valves are uh, immobile and calcified then there will be thank you very much these are the few mcqs